Right now it's my turn to say good morning and happy new year and Merry Christmas. I knew I'd mess you up if I did that in a row. Um, it, is still, uh, it is still the Christmas season. That's why we, uh, we go back and revisit these shepherds who are in the field uh, and they hear the story and they rush to Mary and Joseph and, uh, and then we jump ahead eight days and we land on January 1st and here we are. Uh, it is, uh, it's a neat thing that happens every year on January 1st where we get this, this moment in the infant life of Jesus uh, right up against our, our secular uh, holiday. And, and by the way, um, I think it's amazing that you are here on this day. It's January 1st. You could be a lot of other places. Um, you, you probably enjoyed a lovely evening last night. Uh, some of you woke up early this morning and went out to see the sunrise or did a polar bear plunge uh, already or something along those lines. Uh, and you're here on the first day of the year uh, singing these wonderful songs in this wonderful community gathered around the Lord's table. Um, and it says a lot about who you all are and who we are together. And so, uh, so thank you for being here. Um, it's, uh, I think, a wonderful way of us entering into the next year. And I love that on January 1st, we return to the story of Jesus receiving his name as a way of taking that first step into 2017 in this case. Um, the name of Jesus is an extraordinarily ordinary thing, like so many things in this story, right? Uh, his name was Joshua. It was probably the most common name given to little boys uh, that year, right? His name was Joshua. But that's a special, special, extraordinary name, right? Joshua was uh, a common name, is a common name. Uh, in Hebrew, he probably would have been called Yeshua in Aramaic, probably something like Yeshua. Also, uh, Yehoshua would have been one way of saying it. And it goes back all the way back to the story of the man who led the Israelites into the land of promise, after Moses dies, if you remember the story, Moses and the Israelites make it through the Red Sea and they get the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai and they're wandering through the desert and Moses takes uh, himself up to the mountain to look out over the plain. They're about to enter into uh, the land called Canaan, the land that God promised them after wandering in the desert for 40 years. And he looks and then he dies. He never makes it. But before he dies, he passes on his mantle to Joshua, the son of Nun. Joshua, whose name means, or Yehoshua, whose name means, uh, Jehu, Jeho, uh, Yehovah, right? God, Shua, saves. God is saving us. What a great name for the man who would finally help deliver, which is another way of saying save, the Israelites these children who have been wandering through darkness and desert for so long, finally making it into the place of promise. God does it. Joshua is the vehicle. And Joshua's name is exactly a manifestation of what is happening. You don't think Mary and the angel were conspiring a little bit when this, this baby sitting in Mary's lap finally coming to be circumcised on the eighth day to fit perfectly into Jewish tradition and finally receiving his name. And they say, yes, but this was the name that's been prepared for him since before he was ever even conceived. God is saving us. Give him that name. That's what's happening here. The people are finally going to be delivered. The people are finally going to be rescued. They're finally going to come out of their wandering in the desert and find themselves exactly where God wants them to be to save them. We'll call him Jesus. That's right. He is the one who is the manifestation of God's action in this world to save us. It is helpful to me to remember that as we take our first step into 2017, to remember how important that name is, how important God's action is, and to know who it is that we are following into the coming year. We are following the one who has promised to us to deliver us out of all the places of hopelessness and brokenness, all of the desert places in our life, into the place that God has promised us. The very name that we say in our prayers, the name of the one that we follow, is to us a blessing, is to us um, a provision for all the work that we have to do to finally make it off that mountain overlooking the land of promise and make it finally into that kingdom of God that God has promised us. 
<clears throat> that sense of being blessed by a name is also an ancient Hebrew tradition. It goes back earlier in the book of Numbers. So the book of Numbers is called Numbers because it opens up with the counting of the Israelites, but it is also called uh, the wanderings in the wilderness. It's the story of all the things that the children of Israel will have to do to get to Canaan. And it starts off with this census, and then it goes into a number of different festivities that they have to do ritually, and then they go, and they start walking. And early on, chapter 6, Moses is told by God that he needs to go and bless the people. And you've heard this blessing before. Moses goes to, uh, to Aaron, actually, Aaron and his sons, and says, this is how God has told me to bless, for you to bless the people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And God finishes off this little statement to Moses. Thus you shall bless the people of Israel and my name will be upon them. The very name of God being upon the children of Israel is the blessing. When we think of blessings, sometimes we think of well-wishing, right? We say, God bless you when someone sneezes. We say, bless you when somebody leaves. We're patting them on the back. That's about it sometimes, right? That is not at all what they meant. Right? An analogy, though a somewhat weak one, might be something like, uh, if, I say, uh, if I say to my wife, hey, it's New Year's Eve. I'm going to go out and, and uh, spend some time with my friends uh, last night. And she says, fine, right? You, you may go. Um, then that's something like permission, right? And sometimes we do blessings kind of like permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. Or pat on the back or something like that, right? But instead, if she were to say, um, oh, that sounds wonderful. Have a great time. Here's 40 bucks. A couple drinks on me, right? Go ahead. Then that's, that's a true blessing, right? In a number of different ways. <laughs> um, that is not just permission, but also guidance and provision and preparation and this sense of, of how the person giving that permission sort of stays with you all the way through it, right? When God blesses the children of Israel, God is saying to them, my name will be on you and you will have everything you need to make it through the desert. You'll have everything you need to make it through all the dark places. You'll have everything you need when you get hungry. You'll have everything you need when you face trials and tribulations, when you face uh, opposing armies, when you face confusion and doubt. Everywhere you turn on this path, and it's going to be a long and winding path, my name will be upon you, and because my name is upon you, you will have all that you need. Go with my blessing. It's one of the very last things that happen before the Israelites begin their journey. Today we are blessed by this name that we take upon ourselves when we are baptized, when we take upon ourselves, when we join in this community. We are children of Christ. We are Christians. We are little Christs, little followers of Jesus. We take this name upon us and we are blessed by it, not in some way as a, as a well wish, but as a powerful sense of how we have what we need to enter into the land of promise to make it through what, what life has in store for us in the coming year. Pretty much a guarantee that it's not going to be easy. It never is easy. 2016 was hard, and all of us have joked around about it being one of the worst years we can remember. It was no harder than any other year. It was no harder than any other year. This year will be hard. But we will be different because we take the name of Christ upon, it, upon us. And we are blessed by it. And here, I think, is, is the other great thing that the Israelites understood that when they were blessed by God's holy name and placed that name upon themselves, they in turn became a blessing to others. This year when we go out from here and we decide that we are going to be children of Christ, when we decide that we are going to take this name upon us, when we decide that we are going to be blessed in such a way that we have the provisions we need for our journey, we are also deciding to help others who have never even heard the promises of God See the light of a new day. Be blessed, people of God. Be blessed and be ready and be prepared for the journey ahead of us. And be blessed by the name of Christ so that we can be a blessing to others in Christ's name. Amen.